you act like this is a one-time occurrence. You literally do this every time we're playing. This is what we do for a living, like learn how to operate. Oh, I want to call the clock. I want to call the clock. Oh, God, he has aces. Don't make comments, Jerry. Nope. And he's kicked off. Really bad. Yeah. And he's right, of course. You don't know how bad I run. I told you guys how bad I run in poker. Nobody knows but me. Life and poker have a lot in common. They both come with their rule books, but also a bunch of unwritten guidelines that can be as tricky as figuring out why your pet cat gives you that judgmental stare. It's a whole world of do's and don'ts that can make or break your game faster than a cheetah chasing a snail. In this video, we look at 16 things you should never do at the poker table and all the rules to improve the game. Number 1. Do not angle shoot. Angle shooting is when a player purposefully does anything unethical to exploit or confuse opponents at the table. It's like watching a master magician trying to trick you with their sneaky tactics. Now angle shooting may not technically be cheating, but it's definitely not the most polite way to play. It's like using a water pistol in a spaghetti fight. Sure, you might get away with it, but it's just not cool. And the granddaddy of angle shoots pretending you're about to call just to mess with your opponent's head. Um, he shoved his chips in and Ryan Armenian calls. Mike moves all in and Feldman makes a snap call and Armenian tries to take his rack back. Number two, never slow roll. A slow roll is when a player purposefully pauses before calling a usually all-in bet with an extremely strong or unbeatable poker hand. Imagine this, you've gone all-in with a solid hand and you're anxious waiting for your opponent to make their move. But instead of a quick and clean call, they decide to put on a show as if they're auditioning for a poker drama. They take their sweet time, acting all serious, and you start feeling like you are stuck in a time loop. But wait, there is more. Slow rolling isn't just about the dramatic pause. Oh no, it gets even juicier. It's also about keeping everyone in suspense until the very last moment at showdown. Slow rolling might seem like harmless fun, but it's actually a bit of a poker party foul. I thought you would even be You do anything to me, you can call me an M or something, no, you're no, you, slow you, me, you I'll punch you in the mouth. All right, you, you think I'm joking, I'm not. Picture this. You are already feeling the pressure of losing your hard-earned chips, and someone decides to add extra stress to the mix. It's like throwing a snowball at someone who's already slipping on ice. Cold and heartless. Strange reaction. Jeez, Zhang, try not to be so upset about it. And you know what's worse? There is no specific rule saying slow rolling is illegal. Sneaky, right? But just because it's not officially against the law doesn't mean it's cool. In fact, slow rolling can turn you into a poker pariah. You'll make enemies faster than you can shuffle a deck of cards and the fish might swim away from your table, leaving you high and dry. Your reputation is on the line here, folks. Slow rolling can tarnish it faster than you can say royal flush. And believe me, a bad reputation at the poker table is like having a leaky boat. You'll be sinking in no time. Number 3. Tanking Tanking refers to the act of taking an excessive amount of time to make a decision during a hand. Now don't get me wrong. Taking a moment to ponder your moves is perfectly acceptable, but when you take it to the extreme, that's when the trouble starts. Tanking is like hitting the pause button on the poker game. Everyone's waiting, twiddling their thumbs, and you are sitting there, lost in thought, like you are solving world peace. But here's the kicker. Excessive tanking doesn't just slow down the game. It also disrupts the whole vibe at the table. This is unbelievable, by the way. He is yet to act. It's like having that one awkward guest at a party who kills the mood with their never-ending stories. And if that's not enough, Tanking can be a sneaky way to deceive your opponents. It's like wearing a poker face on top of your poker face. You're trying to make them second guess themselves, but trust me, they'll be second guessing your intentions instead. You want to have that conversation with them, that's fine, but you act like this is a one-time occurrence. You literally do this every time we're playing. You got five time banks, you got 20 bigs, you know what you're gonna do? This is what we do for a living, like learn how to operate. Oh, and let's not forget about buying time to think and analyze the situation. It's like getting an extra few minutes in an exam, except it's not exactly fair play in poker. Come on folks, it's a game of skill, not a test of how well you can stretch a minute. One eternity later.
Our partners VIPGrinders.com is hosting an exclusive $15,000 free roll for the WPT World Championship which will likely be the biggest live tournament ever held and there is no buy-in required. Check the video description or the pinned comment to know how to participate. Number 4. Do not call the clock unless it's necessary. Clock. Man, that was quick. <laughs> I, I took like 35, 40 seconds. In poker, calling the clock is a term used when a player believes that another player is taking an excessive amount of time to make a decision. Now calling the clock is no joke. It's a serious action that should be reserved for those moments when a player seems to have entered a time warp. Oh, I want to call the clock. I want to call the clock. You come to my game and you're wasting my time. Calling the clock should be a last resort. Like that emergency snack you stashed away for a rainy day and you do not whip it out unless you absolutely need it. Remember, the purpose of calling the clock is to prevent excessive stalling, not to cause chaos. It's like politely tapping someone's shoulder to remind them that the train is about to leave. Gentle, yet effective. Even if you do feel the need to call the clock, let's do it with a touch of finesse. Nobody likes a table tyrant, so try to avoid creating tension or animosity. Number 5. Always act in turn. Acting out of turn in poker refers to making a decision or taking an action before it's your proper turn to do so. It's like blurting out the answer in class before the teacher finishes the question. Now if you slip up and act out of turn, usually the action taken prematurely is deemed invalid and you'll get a chance to correct your mistake when it's your proper turn. Number 6. Pay attention to the action. Paying attention at the table is like having your poker radar on full blast. It's crucial for your game and shows respect for the poker gods and your fellow players. Now I get it. The modern poker world can be noisy and distracting and we all love our music. But hey, let's not go overboard with it. Picture this. You miss the action because you're jamming to your favorite music and suddenly you're that person who's asking, wait, what just happened? It's like being late to the punchline of a joke awkward and a bit embarrassing. Be warned, subscribing to this channel may cause uncontrollable poker chip shuffling and an irresistible urge to challenge your grandma to a high stakes poker match. Number 7. Keep quiet if you're not in the hand. When you're not in the hand, it's time to zip those lips and keep shut like a poker ninja. When are you going to get me on TV, mate? All this talking doesn't fly in a multi-way pot. This is one of the most important aspects of poker etiquette and here's why. Imagine this, you're sitting at the table trying to focus on your game and suddenly someone starts chattering away. It's like trying to read a book when someone's blasting music in the background. Distracting and annoying. But wait, there's more. Your innocent chit chat could inadvertently give away information. It's like accidentally dropping breadcrumbs for the birds to follow. Okay. Don't make comments, Jerry. Nope. And he's kicked off. Really bad. And yeah, he's right, of course. You know? Yeah, you're right. I was just joking. No, no, but it's not a joke. Yeah? yeah Number eight. Do not splash the pot. Splashing the pot in poker refers to the act of carelessly throwing chips into the pot while making a wager. It's like trying to make a fancy milkshake and ending up with milk everywhere. Messy and unnecessary. Carelessly throwing those chips makes it a nightmare for the dealer and other players to keep track of the wagers. Imagine this, you are trying to count the chips in the pot but they are scattered all over the place like confetti after a celebration. Suddenly, nobody knows exactly how much is in the pot and disputes start popping up like mushrooms after a rainstorm. It's a poker circus we do not want. Number 9. Do not hit and run. In poker, hit and run refers to a strategy where a player joins a table, plays a few hands, wins a big pot and then quickly leaves without giving other players a fair chance to win their money back. It's like taking all the cookies at a bake sale and leaving the other folks with crumbs. It's just not fair play and sportsmanlike. Poker is not just about winning individual hands. It's also about building relationships and practicing good sportsmanship. Remember, you'll be playing with these same players in the future and you do not want to be known as the Houdini of poker. Number 10. Organize your chips correctly. Group your chips into stacks based on their denominations. This makes it easier to count and determine the value of your chip stack at a glance. And here's a nifty trick. Place higher denomination chips at the bottom and lower at the top. 
It's like building a sturdy foundation for your poker tower. Number 11. Do not eat at the table. We have all seen our favorite poker pros chow down at the table like it's a buffet. But here's the deal. Eating at the poker table is generally a big no. It's like having a picnic on a white carpet. Messy and not so pleasant for everyone else. Picture this. You're trying to concentrate on your game and suddenly someone's munching away like they're at a food festival. Not only is it distracting, but it can also turn the pristine poker surface into a food battlefield. Let's keep the poker table looking like a masterpiece, not a food fight arena. If you need to eat, take designated breaks or step away from the table. Number 12. Do not reveal your cards. Let's talk about a cardinal rule in the poker world. Do not reveal your cards. It's considered a sign of good manners not to show your cards to other players, especially when you're folding your hand. He decided that he would make the call and show everyone at the table that he has the eight of diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and recommend to not do that. By revealing your cards while folding, you are unintentionally giving away valuable information to your opponents. It's like showing your hand in a poker game of charades. Oops, there goes the element of surprise. Number 13. Tip the dealer. Let's talk about a little tradition that goes a long way. Tipping the dealer. It's like giving a round of applause to the maestro who conducts the poker symphony. Now tipping the dealer is not a mandatory requirement, but it's a gesture of appreciation and respect for the hard work they put into facilitating the game. They often work long hours, dealing hand after hand with a smile, even when facing a table of poker faces. Tipping them is a way to acknowledge their dedication and show gratitude for their service. Plus, let's not forget that dealers often rely on tips as a significant part of their income. It's like a cherry on top of a poker sundae. It sweetens the deal and shows them that their efforts are valued. Now, the amount to tip can vary depending on various factors like the stakes, and the overall size of the pot. A standard guideline is to tip around 1-5% to of the pot. Ultimately, it comes down to your personal discretion. Consider the quality of service, your own financial situation, and the overall atmosphere at the table. Number 14. Never complain about bad beats. Let's talk about a crucial rule at the poker table. Do not complain about bad beats. Sick. Can I even play in this game? I mean, what the f they find all I mean, what the f it's like accepting the ups and downs of the poker roller coaster with grace and resilience. In poker, skill and luck go hand in hand and bad beats are just part of the game. So instead of constantly crying about those unfortunate hands, let's embrace the reality of poker. It's not always rainbows and butterflies. Complaining about bad beats can give off the vibe that you do not fully grasp how poker works. You don't know how bad I run. I told you guys how bad I run in poker. Nobody knows but me. Okay? It's like blaming the weather for not getting your favorite ice cream flavor. It's just not how the world operates. Nobody likes a crybaby at the table. Self-pity is the least attractive accessory in poker fashion. So let's leave the drama behind and play with a poker face that shows we are ready for anything. Moreover, when you whine about the bad beats, you're revealing that you are tilting. It's a leak in a boat, slowly sinking your game. Tilt can lead to poor decisions and ultimately cost you more money in the long run. Let's keep our emotions in check and stay in control. Number 15. Avoid arguments. Poker is all about having a good time and socializing with fellow players. Arguments can turn the table into a battleground of tension and hostility, ruining the fun for everyone. So let's keep it cool and composed. If you have a genuine disagreement with another player, don't let it escalate into a poker war. Instead, call over the floor man to help resolve the issue. Number 16. Protect your whole cards. Protecting your whole cards is like guarding a treasure chest full of gold. It's crucial to keep it safe and secure. As the game progresses and the tension builds, players can sometimes become careless with their cards. They might forget that opponents are lurking within their range of peripheral vision. Just like a sly fox, they might try to catch a glimpse of those precious cards. Looking at another player's cards is a big no-no in the poker world. It's like crossing the line from friendly competition to outright cheating. But here's the thing, before worrying about others, 
Protect your own cards in the first place. It's like building a fortress around your hand. Keep those whole cards close to your chest like a master magician guarding their secrets. Don't let anyone get a peek and maintain the element of surprise.